Good afternoon, everyone, and it's a beautiful day for some college football here in Buena Vista, Virginia. The site of today's NCAA Division III football matchup between the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon College and your Southern Virginia University Knights. The Yellow Jackets come in today's game ranking 13th in the nation according to the AFCA coaches poll and 12th in the D3 football top 25 poll. So a really tight contest I'll be expecting today, really tough competition. And I'm Dawson Weider, joined my good friend and Southern Virginia University softball assistant coach Colby Kemp, and clearly today, Southern Virginia hoping to pull off the upset here at home. Oh, absolutely. Thanks again. <laughs> absolutely, Dawson. Southern Virginia gets the opportunity to host this number 12 ranked team here, Randolph Macon. Not only that, Randolph Macon is somebody every team on this campus gets excited to play oh, regardless yeah. of the sport. Absolutely. I mean, they're always, they have a great culture of competition in any sport they participate in. I mean, in the five years that I've been commentating here at SVU, I feel like every time that I've called a football game against them, Randolph Macon is in the top 25 in some form or fashion. So a great culture of consistency and excellence. And it's always great to see how Southern Virginia stacks up against them each and every single time. And there have been several times where Southern Virginia has played them very tough, including last year. Yeah, last year they had a good first half, you know, on the road at Randolph Macon, a very difficult place to play. And then unfortunately they couldn't keep up the pace in the third quarter, Randolph Macon opened it up and uh, scored 21 points. And Dean, that's kind of been the story for a lot of Southern Virginia's matchups with some of, the, some of these top tier programs is that they hang tough in the first half. In the third quarter, they come out and the other team tends to come out and really lay the boom in that third quarter and pull away. And so I think a big thing we'll talk about in today's game a lot is the fact that Southern Virginia needs to keep that intensity up in that third quarter. So we'll see if they're able to do so. We see the coin toss here, middle of the field. Randolph Macon has won the toss. They will defer to the second half. So Southern Virginia will receive the opening kickoff of today's game, get a chance to set the tone offensively. And Southern Virginia so far this year, it's it's been tough going. 0-2 so far to start the year. They were shut out in the first game, scored nine points last week. And so got some things rolling offensively. But the main thing Colby, you and I were talking about before the game is staying on the field, right? Last week, they converted two out of 14 third downs. And when you're trying to stay in a game against a competitive team like Randolph-Macon, what happened last week ain't going to cut it. No, absolutely. If you're, you know, we saw last week Randolph Macon, they ran up 719 yards of total offense. Right. So SVU, they've got to do what they can to stay on the field. Their best defense today is going to be as long as their offense can stay on the field. You know, keep keep their defense off the field. Keep Randolph Macon's offense off of the field. You know, you talk about you talk about that that defense, the offense. Both, both units, you know, they're young. We were tallying right. it up beforehand. 40 seniors, 17 right. fifth-year seno seniors on the side of Randolph-Macon, and only three seniors on, you know, make up the Southern Virginia Knights. Yeah, so it's going to be very interesting to see if some players can step up there, and we will have the national anthem here, and we'll take a short break. We bow our heads before you this beautiful morning with gratitude for the intervention that you have set forth in our lives that have brought us here together to grow and to experience healthy competition and the testing of the abilities that you've given us. We recognize the things that we enjoy, the freedoms that we enjoy, and the love that we enjoy that comes down from above. We pray for a spirit of sportsmanship. Of gratitude for our situations to settle upon us, that we may enjoy safety in this competition, that we may enjoy edification, and that we may come away inspired to serve you and to improve our lives and those, the lives of those around us. This we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you would all please rise, remove your caps, and face the flag. Performing today's national anthem is Evelyn Nelson, senior from Carson, Washington. He's gonna get the
And with that, we'll get this game on the road. And you know, Kobe, you and I were talking about some things as far as what Southern Virginia needs to do to stay in this game. We got a quote from head coach of Southern Virginia, Joe Dupay, where he talked about Randolph-Macon being an incredibly talented football team with Coach Aruza, who just celebrated over 100 wins over the past couple of years. I mean, he's absolutely been fantastic at establishing a consistent culture at Randolph-Macon. And he says it's no surprise to him that they're ranked 12 in the nation. This is the best team that they will have faced so far this year in the early going of 2023. And Coach Dupay said, we need to play on the edge to have a chance with the nationally ranked program. Winning the turnover battle, kicking game, mental game, and critical situation is a must. And Coach Dupay is excited to see how his guys step up to the challenge this week. And one of the ones I want to focus on is critical situations. You know, like we were talking about third down conversions. That's something you have to do to stay in a game with a uh, program like this. Again, you mentioned over 700 total yards in last week's game for Randolph-Macon. You know, and I, I told you before we went live that if you as a team, even if you have a team that plays the best defense you can possibly see, and you don't stay on the field offensively, eventually that defense is going to crumble just due to exhaustion. That's just going to happen. So you got to make sure you give your defense a rest and stay on the field, convert those third downs, even if you don't end up scoring. Keep drives going. Keep drives alive. Well, if you can keep the, li the drives alive, you're going to be battling in the field possession battle. Right. You know, you're not always turning that ball over. You know, if you take the ball over your 15, 20-yard line every time and turn it over on three downs, Randolph Macon's going to live at the, you know, 35, 40-yard 40 40 yard line. This first kickoff is a booming kick into the end zone. So Southern Virginia will start off this drive at their own 25-yard line back to receive was going to be Alex Langtree, who's received a majority of the carries for Southern Virginia's running backs over the past couple of years. And that story has been the case so far this year. Langtree has had a hard time going as far as gaining yards. They've got a total of 16 yards on the year so far and 14 carries. So he's really been trying to grind at it. And we've seen him be the most consistent running back the past couple of years. So you can expect to see him get going in the next couple of games, if not today. Absolutely, he's going to get those carries. You know, you got to start with the offensive line, though. 14 yes. carries, 16 yards. You know, that's not all on Alex. He's got to you know, rely on that offensive line to open some holes up. That throw to the left side, just out of the reach of wide receiver number nine, Matt Johansson. And that quarterback right now is actually Lachlan Hackey. We've talked about before the game how he's actually gotten some time back there under center, or I guess in the shotgun in this case. Him and Isaiah Maxey have both had a lot of time in the pocket as far as being the quarterback on this team is concerned. And so we'll see how he's able to lead this offense against this also phenomenal Randolph-Macon defense because we've talked until our faces are blue about the offense Randolph-Macon. But this defense is also fantastic. Got a handoff to the right side. Got plenty of great blocks. Finally knocked out of bounds is Dumbo Dwyer, freshman from Woodbridge, Virginia, able to gain about six yards on that second down carry. Got to hand it to Alex Langtree on that coming out. Absolutely. He got the block to spring, you know, that 10-yard gain. So now it'll be third down and four to go. A very manageable third down. And again, we talked about converting third downs. This is one of those where you have to convert early on, set the tone, and make sure that you can let Randolph Macon know that, hey, we can move the ball. Aki hands it off to the right side. It's going to be close, maybe a yard short for number 33, Walter Collins, the freshman running back from Cache Valley, Utah. And he indeed will be a yard short, making it fourth and one. And are you surprised to see them sort of hesitate a little bit to punt the ball away here? Not really, to be honest with you. You know, Coach DePay back in his you know first season returning here, you know, picked up nine yards there on two plays. Go ahead, take a shot. Why not? Got a loaded set right now. Direct snap and blown up because the low snap. You could argue would have had a chance had the snap been good, but it was just at the feet of Walter Collins. So turnover on downs deep in Southern Virginia territory. You know, that's not what you wanted to have happen there, but I'll I'll give Coach DePay a little bit of credit there for going ahead and taking that opportunity. You know, had about a half yard to go. And after two solid running plays, they tried to show some confidence in this young team. I agree. I like the decision. It's just the execution, of course, that failed in that situation. You got to get that snap higher. And, you know, you're snapping to someone different than you usually are. Because as a center, you're used to snapping straight back to the quarterback. So you're snapping to the side. That's a little tough to do. 
to kind of fight your nature. They're going to hand it off up the middle, breaking some tackles. Carrying the ball that time was number 35, Nick Hale, who comes into today's game with six rushing touchdowns. And we talked about before this game, Colby, how Randolph-Macon, they can move the ball pretty much any way they want, but at the very bare bones of it, they are a running team. They have a running back in Hale with six touchdowns. Then you have Johnson with three touchdowns and Clark with two. Makes it for a good majority of their points. Handing it off once again to Hale. And he's going to fall forward for the first down. He's a tough back to bring down. Yeah, he really keeps those legs moving. Stout. Stout build. So he's going to be one. He's going to tire out that front line of the night defense. He absolutely is. Now it's first down and 10 at the 15-yard line of Southern Virginia. This is one of those moments where you took the gamble on fourth down if you're Southern Virginia. Now as a defense, can you hold off this offense, which again has scored 50 points a game so far in the first two seasons of the 2023, or first two games of the 2023 season. Another handoff up the middle. Bowling forward for a gain of about seven yards. You know, thinking back a little bit to that decision by Coach Depay, you know, as he... You know, he, he, he put a challenge out to both his offense and defense there with that one decision. Right. You know, showing, hey, offense, I challenge you to get this half yard. If not, defense, you're going to have an opportunity early in this game to try and hold up. Absolutely, because anyone who's been watching SVU football over the past five years will tell you that SVU's main strength has been their defense. And that's kept them in games on multiple occasions, and Hale falls forward for... A gain of about four to the two-yard line. So four straight carries for Nick Hale. Really working Hale early. And honestly, if I'm the Yellow Jackets, I'm thinking, why not hand it to him one more time? He's carried you this entire way on this drive. And that they will. He'll be stopped just short of the goal line. So fifth straight carry for Nick Hale, and he will get a well-deserved break on the sidelines. And in for him will come in Quasi Clark, number 25. He's the other running back that I mentioned with two touchdowns so far on the year. Another one of those 40 seniors that we talked about right. earlier. So a lot of a lot of experience here on this Yellow Jacket squad. Power right formation here for the Yellow Jackets. They're going to hand it off to Clark. And he's going to bulldoze his way into the end zone for an early touchdown for Randolph Macon College. Make the score 6 to 0, PAT pending. So now, if you're Southern Virginia, you have to answer. Now, you have to answer, make sure you don't get too far down and get battle back. And so we'll see this point after attempted by Kyle Isle, junior from. I said junior, excuse me, junior kicker. Been pretty consistent all year long. Kick is up, and it is good. Make the score seven to nothing in favor of the Yellow Jackets. So again, in any sport, when you find yourself down early, this is kind of a mental toughness check. You know, do you battle back right away or do you automatically admit defeat? Because I've seen both scenarios. I've seen plenty of teams, not SVU, but other teams that I've been associated with in the past where, you know, the first team scores and you just kind of think, well, that's it. But the other teams were like, no, we got a lot of game left to play. I mean, it's just the beginning of the first quarter, so plenty of time. Well, in a game like football, you expect scoring to happen. Yes. You know, you don't come in. You know, I don't think Coach DePay was under any thought that uh, this game was going to end up 7 to nothing or 10 to 3 or anything like that. So you're expecting to score, and that was one of his keys, right? Mental toughness. Yes. And, you know, a young team going against a nationally ranked team, you know, that's all you can ask. What are you guys made of right, right. here? Show me today, you know, where Coach Depay will be like, I just want to see how you guys battle for 60 minutes today. Right. And I think the last time any coach in – on any football program reasonably thought that it will only be about 7-3 to three. It was maybe in the 1930s, back when scoring wasn't quite as normal of a thing. Fair catch by Langtree. So the Knights will have a chance to try it again offensively. 
The Knights ran four straight run plays, and for those who just tuned in, they tried to convert the fourth and one, and because of a low snap, they ended up getting tackled for a loss and turnover on downs. So first down and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And we'll see once again Lachlan Hackey in the shotgun. Got two receivers on the near side, two receivers on the far side. And in motion. Fumbled handoff. Two miscues early on for Southern Virginia. The missed snap on the fourth down attempt, and then now the missed handoff coming around the near side. You know, that was a play that worked well in that first series. You know, probably thinking, let's go back to that. But again, you, know, you got a freshman quarterback. That's a that's a timing play right there. Right. Where the timing's got to be just perfect, and we saw that it, it wasn't there, and that was the cause of that, that fumble. And that makes it about second down and 22. Fortunately, the Knights were able to recover it, but now they're forced in a situation where, you know, it's very unlikely you're going to move the chains on this possession just because you're so far back. But we'll see what creative play calling they pull off here. A timeout now called by Southern Virginia. Some confusion at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think the play clock was down. I'm not wanting to have to take another five yards deep in their own territory. Because even a punt out of that situation still more than likely winds up with Randolph Macon having the ball in your own territory for the second straight drive. And so yeah. again, it is second down and 22. Yeah. Unfortunately for the Knights here, we see the first play of the second series. You know, they shoot themselves in the foot, so to right. speak. You, know, you don't mind it if the defense is making the play or whatever, but right there, you know, they, they gave up 12 yards of possession, you know, on their own. Yeah. Without forcing the defense to have to make a play. It's like in a battle. You know, you expect the other side to be your enemy, the other side everyone to have your back, but you don't expect to hurt yourself in the process because no one's going to win in that scenario when you're already hurting yourself to begin with. And so we'll see what Southern Virginia is able to do here on the second down and very long. Man in motion. They're going to hand off up the middle, stuffed at the line of scrimmage. He's actually going to lose about two yards, third and 24. And, you know, you talk about those early play miscues in a drive. It really sets the tone for the rest of the drive, you know. Again, when you lose about 10 yards on a handoff, it's going to make it really difficult for you to do anything creative. You're just trying to make sure that you don't lose more yardage, which they ended up with the two-yard loss there. Definitely creates an uphill battle. Yes. Uphill situation. You know, if, if it happens on third and eight, you take a sack or something, it's not as bad as just a 12-yard loss on first down. Lockley's first pass attempt. It's a screen. A little high pass and a solid hit there by number 34. That is Tony Skinner, another one of the seniors we talked about before the game. So now it'll be fourth down and 20. So clearly Southern Virginia is going to punt this away. This is number 35, Michael Brown, senior from Leesburg, Virginia, who will be punting it away deep in his own territory. It's a very high punt. It's going to take a yellow jacket bounce, be around the 40-yard line. Made it to where number 11, Jojo Maranella, was not able to get to it. So now we'll see the second possession for the Yellow Jackets. The last one resulted in a touchdown run. And that was by Clark. And again, before that, they had five straight carries for Nick Hale. They have yet to attempt to pass today with number five, Drew Campanelli. We'll see if they continue this run first heavy attack. They're going to hand off to Hale once again. Plenty of great blocks up the middle. He's going to gain about five. Good news on that play was even though he was able to cut through the line of scrimmage, first night defender that he met was able to bring him down. Right. 
exactly. I love that you pointed it out to where, like, if you're if the running back is not breaking a ton of tackles, you're bringing him down first contact. I mean, that just knows, okay, let's just bring the contact a little bit close to the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can fight off these blocks because right now this offensive line for Randolph Macon is playing a fantastic first quarter. Another handoff this time to number 20, Mitchell Johnson. He gets his first carry of the day. And right at the first down marker at the 30-yard line, and that will be enough for a first down. And, you know, you, you got to think the most comfortable person on the field right now is number five, Drew Campanelli for Randolph Macon. I mean, he hasn't had to attempt to pass yet. He's been able to hand off the ball to his running backs. They've been able to take care of business. That offensive line, like I said, has been plowing the way. It makes it to where if they do decide to throw it, he'll have all day. Here's Hale once again with the run, brought down by several Knight defenders for a gain of about six. Yeah, Campanelli's primary responsibility right now has been to catch the snap. Yeah. Catch the snap, hand it off to Hill, and five or six yards seems to follow every time. Yeah, simply operate the offense, maintain possession of the ball, and like you said, just take care of the simple things. Dude, running backs are doing a lot of great work right now. But now if you're SVU, the problem with that for you now is that, again, Randolph Megan's been able to run the ball very successfully, so what you're probably going to see is Southern Virginia start to crowd the line of scrimmage, and at that point, that's when Campanella will probably pull the ball, throw around down the sideline. That's a situation you do not want to be in. Another handoff here. That is to Clark, who's going to get the first down. Well, not only are the running backs having a good game so far, Hill and Clark, but you got to hand it to the offensive line as well. Yes. They're creating that you know, that space right there at the line of scrimmage where the running backs are able to clear the line of scrimmage and then meeting a linebacker downfield four or five yards. So now first down and 10 at the Knights 19 yard line. They're gonna hand it off to Clark. He's gonna gain another five yards. And again, if you're an offensive line coach, you're loving what you're seeing. You love to see five yards, five yards, six yards, four yards. If you're in the four to six yard range with each run and play, odds are you're going to be pretty successful. Yep, the math. The math holds true for that, right? That's five, the kind of five, math that I do yards. like. <laughs> <laughs> if you got to make ten yards every four plays and you're making five every play, you're, you're not putting a lot of stress on yourself offensively. So now second down and five. Handing off to Clark on the right side. He's going to bounce it outside. Got a pathway and fantastic hit that time. Kiki Washington. I believe that was number 20. That's Kiki Washington, the defensive back from St. George, Utah. Doing a great job because it looked like Clark had a clear path to the end zone. Then Washington just came in and lowered the boom. Yeah, I thought he was going to get in there. And like I said, Washington was able to fill that hole and put a good hit on him. But nonetheless, you know, Randolph making sitting here at the th you know, with a first and goal at the three-yard line. See if SVU defense can dig deep down, come up with a stop. Right hand off to Clark once again. He's going to reverse it. He's got play open space. And a touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. Great field vision there, seeing that the hole he was going to run into was plugged up, saw the right side open up, and was able to waltz in untouched. Makes it now 13-0 in favor of the Yellow Jackets. So, in accordance to the first two games, a lot of more of the same for Randolph Macon so far. Once again, we'll see Kyle Isle kick the point after. Kick is up, and it's good. Make the score 14 to zero with five minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this first quarter. So now, your Southern Virginia, you find yourself quickly down by two scores. And again, possessing the ball, taking care of the ball has been an issue for you so far. So now you just kind of have to settle down. As a coach, you're kind of sitting there thinking, okay, we've had a couple miscues. It's put us in a hole. We've got to calm down. No, we can, pl we can play. We've been practicing this. We've been playing in games. You know, we've been competitive in the past. We, we know what we're doing. We've played the sport before. And so they just simply need to go out there, execute, get a couple first downs, get themselves more into a rhythm. And then before you know it, you're back in business. 
At least that's the message you should be saying on the sidelines, at least my own personal opinion. No, absolutely. You know, we talked about it. You're playing, you're hosting the number 12 team in the country. Right. A very young team. You're going to be excited. You know, that's probably played into a couple of these early mistakes, you know, mishandling the ball and whatnot. And at this point, you're down 14 to nothing. Just clean it up. Right. Try and be clean from here out. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe you get a turnover. Yeah. You know, and you're able to turn it around on the Yellow Jackets. And a fair catch for Langtree. So the Knights will once again start their possession on the 25-yard line. And honestly, at this point, one thing you really want as a coaching staff for Southern Virginia is you want to flip the field position battle because it's all been on Southern Virginia's side so far. And Southern Virginia started every drive of their own 25. Then you had Randolph Macon starting at Southern Virginia's own, I believe, 20-yard line, their own 40-yard line. Get it to the other side, make it to where if they do give the ball back to Randolph Macon, they have to put together a lengthy drive. Like we said, just make a first down. Once you make yes. the first first down, let's make another second, or make another first down. Lockley's got two backs in the backfield with him. Gonna hand it off to the right side. Gonna move ahead for about two and a half yards is number 33, Walter Collins. He's carried the ball a number of times today so far. It's now second down and eight to go. And we'll see Langtree and Kevin Williams come back in. Kevin Williams actually come, came into this game leading the team in rushing with 111 yards. A lot of that came from a 66-yard run. off to him off the left side. He's got the speed. He's still going strong, making a third down and two. Similar situation what they had in their first drive. We're saw the first couple plays. Let's see if they can convert. A little bit better situation here now. Third and two instead of fourth and one. So not as much pressure. Although you really want to get this first down like we were talking about. Get your initial first down of the game and then see you can move it into uh, Yellow Jacket territory with the next set of downs. And it's getting the play in. Play clock is now at 15. They'll have to set up quickly. Play clock at six. A timeout called by Southern Virginia as they were getting close to a play clock violation. So that's Southern Virginia's second timeout of the half. Only have one remaining until halftime. And that timeout comes with three minutes and 55 seconds left in this first quarter. And while we're taking a quick break, I want to give a shout out and a special thanks to those uh, sponsors who have partnered with Southern Virginia Athletics, including local businesses like Cornerstone Bank, Mill Creek Orthodontics, River Crossing Apartments, Straws Drinks and Eats, Grace Automotive, Papa John's Pizza, Vinyl Cuts, The Beef, Sweet Souvenirs, and Katana Sushi and Hibachi Express. A lot of these are great local places. I go to Katana Sushi and Hibachi frequently. I like my good Hibachi. And then Straws Drinks Needs actually on September 22nd, join them for Star Wars Trivia Night. And Grace Automotive, SVU students and staff can receive 10% off their vehicle maintenance needs. I know I definitely could have used that this past week with my car situation, but regardless, you, third down and two. Are you going to be at Star Wars Trivia Night? Well, I mean, I'm nerdy enough. I could win that, I think. We'll see. You and Logan Davis might have to battle it out. <laughs> and, oh, my goodness. Fantastic defensive play there from Randolph Macon. Several defenders right there to plug that running lane. The ball came loose at the end, but the refs are blowing it down. We'll make it about fourth down and four. And I say, personally, in this situation, you punt it away, try it again to flip the field position battle. But looks like here we have Lockley staying on the field. And a fourth down and four, looks like they're going to change their minds. They entertain the thought for a moment. Probably a good decision there. See yeah. if uh, they can get a good punt away. Maybe try and pin Randolph Macon back near the 20. It's a rugby-style punt, getting a little bit more power underneath it. Block there by number 19 for Randolph-Macon. There's going to be a flag down. Looks like it may have been a block in the back. 
And again, that was number 19, Ricky Thompson, who I think is the guilty party on that one. Yeah, I agree with that right there. There was one man to beat, and Thompson came in and gave him a little bit of help. I believe they're going to put it on number 31, Jacob Lale, instead. We definitely had, if they, if that was one over there, then there was definitely two of them with Thompson, like we just said. Yeah, the first one I thought was a good block. The second one, there where the flag is, that one got him on the back. But this is what we were just talking about. You know, this right. is why you punt right here. You got the penalty, so the Yellow Jackets are going to have to start inside their own 20. It'll be at their own 15 and a half yard line. Maybe that'll help the night defense get a little kick in their step, a Absolutely. little excitement. When you're a defensive player and you have the opposing offense backed up on their own side of the field, there's just a certain edge that you get. A toss down the field, open. Fantastic throw that time by Drew Campanelli and immediately flipped the field position battle right back to Southern Virginia's 31-yard line. And you had to feel that was the risk right there, being deep in the territory. Yes. We talked about that. Campanelli hadn't had to do anything, but that was a perfect opportunity for him to show his arm off. And he threw that absolutely perfectly right in the bread basket for a huge first down for the Yellow Jackets. Again, we talked about earlier, you know, you mentioned Campanelli kind of just being able to sit back and let his running backs take care of the heavy load. And again, that sucked in the defense to where they're able to throw the deep ball, had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity on the outside. Campanelli, another pass this time to number 26, Holden Hodge, senior wide receiver, gain of about seven. So just like that, the passing game's opening up for Randolph Macon. Bobby Balboa was in on that tackle for Southern Virginia. A sophomore from Magna, Utah. So second down and three. Just under two minutes remaining in this first quarter. The Yellow Jackets looking to add another score to their lead. That's Hale with the carry. Close to a first down, but they're going to mark him just short, make it a third down in one situation. This will give the defense another opportunity to, to make a play. See if they can push Randolph Macon back, keep him from getting this first down. Hand off up the middle. He gets the first down by a couple of yards. And once again, that was number 35, Nick Hale on the carry. So now first down and 10 inside the 20 of Southern Virginia. Two seconds left in this first quarter. The Yellow Jackets are in no hurry. Hand off to Hale once again. And he's met that time by number 92, Petty Alatopia, or Petua, excuse me. I want to make sure I get that pronunciation right. That is Ayolu Potea on the tackle. So only a gain of about two. And the Yellow Jackets will let it run down to end the first quarter. So once again, score stands at 14 to zero in favor of the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon College. Southern Virginia currently standing at zero. And again, just a lot of small mistakes plaguing them offensively. They're able to get a couple plays going in the first couple of downs. Third down, just not able to really get anything going. And then, of course, in that fourth down conversion, the missed snap did not help them whatsoever. 
No, they've had a couple plays where they were able to make some positive yardage. They look good. A couple good blocks. You know, the lane tree, you know, being athletic, getting out front, and, you know, a good run there. But, you know, not enough. Not enough right. of those plays. You know, we're going to need to see a little bit better offensive line play. You know, create a little bit more time for those backs to, to find a hole. Yeah. You know, create a hole. And, of course, as a coach, you think each quarter, you tell your players, it's a new game. Each quarter is a new game. Do we win this quarter? Because if you can win each quarter from the end of this game, you win the entire game altogether. So that's the approach you got to have mentally. And during the short break, I want to remind you, you're watching this on night broadcasting here on YouTube. Be sure to give us a like, subscribe, comment down below. Let us know what we can do better as a broadcasting program. We appreciate your support of night's broadcasting. So once again, second down and eight for the Yellow Jackets. Campanelli in the gun. Beside him is Quasi Clark, who's had a couple of solid runs so far in today's game. He's going to get the handoff again. Brought down after a gain of about two. Southern Virginia really able to do a good job of swarming the flat there defensively. Yeah, they were able to string him out into the flat, like you say, and you know, rely on somebody else to make that play. Hold those blockers off, not let him crash the hole. And we got a holding penalty on Randolph Macon. I believe that was in wide receiver number four, Joe Locke. Joe Locke had the long reception in the night territory at the beginning of this drive. So now instead of being, I believe it was gonna be third down at about five, it is now second and 16. This is a tough situation offensively that the Yellow Jackets have been in all game long. Miscommunication there with the wide receiver on the outside. That is number two, the tight end, Brandon Woolridge. I think he expected Woolridge to break out of his route down the field and cut toward the flat. But he was making his way toward the pylon. Yeah, Woolridge, he wanted to go toward the end zone. But Campanelli there, he knew he could see the night defenders. They, they had that side covered. He needed him to just break that off. Yeah. So now it'll be third down and 16. So now your Southern Virginia's defense, this is the best situation you've been in all game long. You have a chance to make a play, you have a chance to bring some pressure, but nothing behind you, absolutely nothing behind you. Campanelli looking to the flat. Campanelli looking to run. He's finally going to throw it, it's going to land out of bounds. So fourth down and 16, and a flag is thrown. I think he might have been past the line of scrimmage. Because the line of scrimmage is at the 25 yard line. The flag is placed at the 23. You're correct, Colby. It'll be a legal forward pass. So not only is it going to be fourth down, but they also lose five yards. It's a loss of down penalty. So it'll be fourth down and 19. Now Randolph Macon will be attempting a field goal here. Kicker Kyle Isle is two for two on the year. His longest has been a 21 yarder. So this will definitely be the longest field goal for him all season if he makes it. Be a 38 yarder. The kick is up, got enough leg. And it's good. New season high for Kyle Isle. Make the score 17 to zero. But again, for Southern Virginia defensively, that's a step in the right direction. You keep them out of the end zone, you make sure that they have to kick that field goal, and you still have yourself to where you are down by three scores, but it's not three touchdowns. There is a huge difference with that. Oh, well, a huge difference there. You know, if they can get their offense on the right track here, maybe come down, score a touchdown. You know, like you said, now they're leading the quarter at the very least. Yeah. You know, so hats off there to the night defense. They stiffened up there after that long completion. You know, they made some good coverages on pass plays and held up there to force that field goal. I want to correct my pronunciation of kicker Kyle Ely's last name. Kyle Ely making the 38-yard field goal on that one. 
And it had a lot of power behind it. It could have gone an extra 10 yards, I think. Yeah, he definitely would have been good there from almost 50 yards. Here's Eli to kick. Langtree will be receiving in a fair catch. And that's always scary as a special teams coordinator when you have the sun kind of pointing towards your return men on a kickoff or a punt. You kind of hold your breath there for a second, want to make sure just catch the ball, just catch the ball, don't lose it in the sun. But the Knights will start this possession once again at their own 25 yard line. Fourteen and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Again, the Knights down three scores. Hackey has a chance to lead this offense on a scoring drive if they can put a couple plays together. Back to pass. Play kind of breaks down. He evades one tackle, but is eventually brought down. That was number 56, Wade Grubbs. Junior defensive tackle and actually helped Hackey right back up. So now a loss of seven on that sack. I think it was similar to Randolph Megan's pass play earlier where Hackey was looking to the flat. The wide receiver did not quite break out fast enough and Randolph Megan had a defender in that flat area. So he had to pull it down and try to find some space. Was not able to find any. Hackey back to pass once again, rolls out to his right. Got a man down the field, a little underthrown, but complete for a first down to number 21, Isaac McMullen. By far the longest play for Southern Virginia's offense so far today. And finally, they get that a minute and a half into the second quarter, their first initial first down of the game. Yeah. And again, that's something you can build off of from there. You say, okay, we've overcome that hurdle. What's the next hurdle? Okay, get another first down. Now another. What's the next hurdle? Get some points on the board. And just going back to the basics is they've already flipped the field now offensively. And again, that throws a little underthrown, and Hackey mishandles the, the fake handoff. So a loss of yardage after the fantastic passing play. So it's like one step forward, two steps back sometimes. And you hate to see them. That's happened a couple times already in this drive where they had the sack on the first play. And we get the long gain, then loss of about six yards on that one. See if they can make their way back towards the line of scrimmage, make it a little bit more of a manageable third down. Thank you back to pass. Goes to his right. He's going to gain maybe about three yards on that pass. That was complete to number six, Jake Shank. Even though that may only be three yards, he needs those little completions. Obviously, yes. he's feeling a little bit of the nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, dropped a couple of those balls, mishandled the snap. So anything like that will help him gain confidence. Hopefully, settle those nerves to where start playing a little bit more forward. Absolutely. You know, I, I've talked to a lot of people who are fans of football, and they all like be like, well, "Why are you just doing these small little passes again? If you're a younger quarterback, that's exactly what's going on. You want to establish that rhythm, make them a little bit more comfortable." Get them in the flow of the game and Hackey now back to pass. Rolls out to his, his left. Got a man down the field. And clear pass interference there by number 14, Colton Payne. I mean, you can't argue that one. Number nine, Matt Johansson. Almost brought that down regardless of the pass interference. Still almost brought that down with the defender draped all over him. He was clearly beaten on that. You know, and just going back to that last three-yard completion, you know, even though it was only three yards, he still had to throw that about 20, 25 yards to make that completion. Right. You know, it was a safe pass out toward the sideline. So that get, allows him to gain a little bit of that confidence that we're talking about. Right, absolutely. So now Southern Virginia on Randolph-Macon's 42-yard line. Now at this point, from here on out, you can't have small mistakes. No more one step, four, two steps back situation. You gotta get a couple yards here, a couple yards there, get a couple of good pass plays. Let's see if Hacking can continue this. Going for the hard count. They're gonna hand it off to number 42, Kevin Williams. He's gonna lose about two yards in that carry. Make it second down and 12. Oh, right now you have a drive going, so you got to 
take matters into your own hands and make sure you can continue that drive, at least, you know, from here, get an attempted field goal or something, something to come out of this. And as you can see from that instant replay, again, it was the left side of the offensive line for Southern Virginia just broke down behind Williams on the carry, and they were able to catch him from behind. This play kind of broke down a little bit too, but Hack able to fall forward for about a yard. It seemed like there was a lot of discombobulation going on there. A couple of running backs running into each other. Some timing was off. Unfortunately, Hackey was hit by two Southern Virginia Knights there before he got to the line of scrimmage. It really held him up. So now third down and 11 with just under 11 minutes to go in this first half. Again, like we said, the Knights in the Yellow Jacket side of the field for the first time today. Trying to make something happen. Down the middle and completed pass that time for Hackey right on the money. That was to number 81. That is uh, KK Baker. That was a good catch there. It was Very a fantastic. good catch there by KK Baker. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's Koa Baker's younger brother. And you even saw number 12, Alex Biddle, come in there and try to knock the ball out at the last second. But Baker able to maintain possession. So now first down and 10 at Randolph-Macon's 24-yard line. And you know, the last two successful pass plays for Hackey, they were a little underthrown, but that one was right where it needed to be, right between the defenders. Like we talked about, maybe gaining a little bit of that confidence. Nerves starting to go away just a little bit. I think that'll be a false start call on number 42, Kevin Williams. They call it a little late. Kevin Williams flinched a little bit on one of Hackey's hard counts. He saw just subtly, and then the refs blew the whistle just a couple seconds later. So now first down and 15. They're going to hand it off. Actually, it's going to be an option. Going to lose more yardage. Randolph Macon was more than prepared for that one. We saw them running that a little bit in pregame. Because, again, we, we've seen that Coach Joe Tupay has a long history with running the option. So you could absolutely expect coming into the season to see a little bit of that. Yeah, Coach Tupay, he ran that in high school himself. Coming, for, coming from a very successful program, Skyline High School in Utah. Yeah. Known for that option run. So. Not surprising at all that that'd be broken out every now and then. That makes it a second down and 19 to go. Hackey back pass. He's gonna chuck it deep. He's got a man open. And that's caught. That'll be a touchdown for Southern. Looks like he dropped it last second. That was number 81, KK Baker. He was wide open. Hackey floated the ball just a little bit. And made it to where Baker had to kind of wait for it a second, but he was wide open. We got a flag in the backfield, though. Let's see what this is. Possibly roughing the passer. I think the refs are discussing with the Knights captains to see if they will accept it or not, depending on what it is. Indeed, it is roughing the passer. So automatic first down, that digs the Knights out of a deep hole. What would have been third down and 20 is now first down and 10 after the 15-yard automatic first down penalty. So it wasn't just roughing the passer, it was hitting the passer below the knees, which of course is also, if not more dangerous than just a regular roughing the passer. But again, on that play, you know, he had Baker wide open and Hackey, I think he saw the pressure coming in. He just tried to get it up to him. Definitely a lot of air under that pass. He did what he could. Yes. You can't fault Hackey and you really can't fault Baker there on that one. Either. That ball was in the air for a long time. He gave the Yellow Jackets time to recover. And off to the left side, here's Williams. Breaking a tackle, spinning to the ground at around the 14 yard line, gain of about five. They're going to call it a gain of four, so make it second down and six. Inside the Yellow Jacket 15 yard. And eight and a half minutes to go in this first half. 
And I also like the fact that in this second quarter, the Knights possessed the ball for a significantly longer period of time than the Absolutely. first Absolutely. I think they took over this drive, if I'm not mistaken, Dawson, about 13 and a half minutes left, and we're down to six minutes, 10 seconds in county. Back you back to pass. Flag thrown, two flags thrown. Wouldn't be surprised to see a couple holding penalties here. Not really sure what else it could possibly be. Guilty of that is number 55, Bryce Lampert, junior from Haymarket, Virginia. That'll back the Knights up to the Yellow Jackets 24 yard line. Make it second down and 16. Just under eight minutes to go in the half. Some confusion on personnel here. Play clock down to 12 seconds. Knights need to hurry. Aki back to pass. It's another screen nearly picked off by defensive lineman number 99. That is KU2. It's now third down 16 again. Hackey is very fortunate that, that pass was not intercepted. They had a successful screen play very similar to that, I believe, in the first drive of the game. So they were trying it out again, but that time Randolph Macon read that basically as well as you possibly can. Yeah, I think it got tipped at the line, which may have been fortunate for the Knights because that ball yeah. fell to the ground right in front of one of the defensive players. Hackey back to pass, this third down and long, throwing towards the right sideline, complete. That is to number six, as Jake Shank. And that makes it fourth down and one. So decision time. In this situation, do you go for it and risk getting no points at all in this drive? I think Coach DePay is going to take the last time out of the half here and think about this decision right here. Like you said, it's a tough debate. Right. You know, they've had a good drive started you know, deep in their own territory, all the way now to the nine yard line of Randolph Macon. You know, field goal attempt, cash in three points, or do you go to, you know, continue this drive and try and get that touchdown? Right, because obviously there's positive and negatives to each situation. If you just settle for the field goal, there's always a chance that you miss it, and then you also don't come in with any points. But that's more of a possible uh, situation for Southern Virginia, but then you go for it, maybe you don't get it, they don't get any points, then the defense for Randolph Macon gets a lot of momentum, everything goes back towards the Yellow Jackets. And in Southern Virginia, you kind of think to yourself, we had a good drive going there and we didn't get anything from it. That can be kind of demoralizing if you don't maintain that mental toughness. So I'm really curious to see what Coach DuPay has in store. Because again, running so far for Southern Virginia in the second quarter has not been incredibly effective. They haven't really been able to get that push at the offensive line. Yeah, they need that push. I'm going to say whatever decision you make here, you have to get it. You know, the best decision is the one you can succeed with. If you know your kicker can make this field goal, I think you go with it. Because mm -hmm. then you get those three points on the board. Because if you don't get this one way or another, Randolph Macon comes away with all of the momentum. And it looks like Southern Virginia will go for it. I see Hackey in the backfield as well as Titan Morris and Walter Collins. Got two receivers on the near side, one on the far side. Got a handoff to the right side. He's going to get the first down, diving towards the three-yard line. It's a first down and goal, so the gamble paid off. And there you go, right decision. Well, whichever one you can make. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's always one of those situations where if they didn't get it on that play, we'd say, oh, what a terrible decision. But if he gets it, it's a great decision. It's all about the success. It, it was. In that situation, it is. It's like I said. If you knew your field goal kicker was automatic, 
you come away with three points, you're happy right. with that. Um, you went with a play you thought you could be successful with and got the first down. So Plus, you also think about they're down by 17. Obviously, a touchdown brings you a little closer. Hand off to the left side. Brought down in the backfield that time. That was number 12 meeting him. That is Alex Biddle. So he backed up to the nine yard lines. So now second and goal. Which I'm always mixed on a situation like this. We have first down and goal with about nine yards in front of you or 10 yards in front of you. Because in a first in a goal line situation, it's so condensed. Whereas if you're backed up a little bit for the quarterback, you have a little more room to work with. Your receivers have more room to work with. You can be a little bit more creative. So let's see what the Knights can do here on second down and goal. Acubac pass throws to the right side of the flat. Met once again by linebacker number 12, Alex Biddle. He is all over the field right now. And that's the thing you talk about, the field being condensed right here. You know, even though the Knights have the ball deep in randolph making territory, the, the Yellow Jackets have the advantage because they're the number 12 ranked team in the country. They right. have better athletes in this condensed space here. So I think it's good to spread it out a little bit here and force them to defend every inch of territory that's between you and the goal line. Hackey's going to take it himself. Running the end zone, touchdown Southern Virginia. So once again, like we said, that fourth down gamble ends up working and paying big dividends for the Knights. As quarterback Lachlan Hackey, the freshman from Idaho Falls, Idaho, Runs it in for the score. That's his first carry of the game, which makes sense as to why it was so open for him. Yes, Randolph making bit on every little fake that that play had in it because Hackey was able to pull that ball out and run right up, right up the middle untouched. Diving into the end zone just to make sure that he didn't get the ball stripped away from him at the last second. Here's the point after attempt. And that is good for number 36, Jerome Reed. Freshman from Clearfield, Utah. So now just like that, again, like we said before, they're winning the quarter. They're Seven winning the quarter. It's it's the small victories, you know, as Coach DePay takes this program over. The first two games have been a little rough, but now here you have it, you know, with five and a half minutes left in this first half, they're down 17 to seven. to the number 12 ranked team in the country. Right. And again, you have, that's your second touchdown scored on the year. And so again, it gets, builds you up momentum and right before halftime as well. Of course, there's still plenty of time. Randolph Macon has enough time to operate their offense, but now the defense has a chance to carry that momentum that the offense just grabs for you with that touchdown and make a play, maybe get you the ball back with a little bit of time. Who knows, let's see if this momentum can carry Southern Virginia to a pretty and the offense, halftime, yeah. the offense carried that ball. They took eight minutes off the clock, so the defense is now well rested. This yeah. gives Coach DePay a chance to go to his defense and issue a challenge. Your offense kept you off the field. They put seven points up on the board. You guys need to dig in and hold right here. Even if the first half runs out with no points scored, 17 to seven, that's gonna be a moral victory right there. This is a high kick. Good wall of blockers for Randolph Macon. But eventually number 26, Holden Hodge, is brought down, pushed out of bounds at the 35 yard line. And just like you said, it's a point I always like to make as well is Southern Virginia gave their defense such a long break and they needed that. They really yes, needed they that did. break. And now it's kind of like a relationship. You know, you, you've done this thing for me, let me repay you. You guys got us points on the board, we'll repay you by making sure we put in all of our effort to stopping them defensively. And so let's see if they can actually pull it off here as the Hornets take the field offensively for the first time. And like you said, a good long while. A good long while. You know, defense should be rested. And, you know, Randolph Macon isn't playing a finesse offense. Right. You know, it's those minutes that the defense plays, they're hard. Wide open deep ball for Campanelli. <laughs> Quick touchdown there for number seven. That is David Wallace. He had no one around him. I feel like the Knights were caught looking in the backfield that time and Walsh able to sneak behind them for a quick touchdown. I mean, you talk about a response, Randolph Macon had one ready to go. 14 seconds after snapping the ball there. They're in the end zone with their third touchdown of the day. Point after here for Ely. Here we go. 
and blocked. It was a mishandled snap. So the blocked point after leaves it 23 to seven. So again, something positive coming from that quick touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. Able to get in there and just tap that ball. And Dawson, as we talk about the ebb and flow of the game, you know, Randolph Megan comes in, scores a quick touchdown, but now the Knights have to seize the opportunity that they have because their yes. defense was out on the field. Randolph Macon's defense out on the field for eight minutes. Now the Knights have an opportunity because they're going to be going back against that same defense that hopefully is a little bit winded at this point. Right, because exactly. They only had one play of rest, essentially. And I believe blocking that a point after attempt is number 26, Colby Knight, the sophomore from Saratoga Springs, Utah. Yeah, that's a great point, too, is, yes, Randolph-Macon did score the quick touchdown, but the defense is probably sitting there thinking, maybe couldn't have given us a little bit more of a break that time. And your offense shouldn't be tired. Right. Right? Exactly. Never tired on offense. Never, ever tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the offensive line might have something to say about that. <laughs> Here's Ely for the kick. Offsides on the kicking team. So that'll help Southern Virginia Langtree with letting it bounce in the end zone. Indeed, like you said, Colby, there is a flag down at the 37-yard line on randolph Macon's side. Just waiting to hear the official announcement. I think there are at least two players trying to get a head start down there to cover that kick. So now, again, that'll give the Knights a little bit of extra yardage after that kickoff. And they will set up shop at their own 30. So an extra five yards than what they've been used to starting with. Five minutes and, and 16 seconds left in this first half. Find themselves down 23 to 7. And again, the Knights offense, they just scored a touchdown. They're feeling a little bit of momentum. Yes, it was a little deflated with the quick touchdown for Randolph Macon. But you're able to put something together, see if you can do it again. Pass a little too far to the outside, just outside the outstretched hands of number 14, Jaron Dickerson. Or Dixon, excuse me. Wide receiver from Harriman, Utah. I mean, those passes to the flat, they're some of the toughest passes in football. Because some of them can be the longest passes you throw during a game. And you're throwing across the field, towards the sideline. And you don't think about it when you're watching it, but that's some of the throws you have to put the most power into it to make sure that it's where it needs to be. Because you can't afford to miss to the inside on those. Of course. Well, that's a pick six all the way. And right now the wind's picked up, so Lockley has to throw a little bit into the wind on that one. And running the ball that time was number 33, Walter Collins. No gain, so it's now third down and 10. And that's going to have the clock at 4 minutes and 46 seconds and counting. Hackey back to pass, rolls out to his left, sets his feet, throws. Great job going up for the grab as number 21, Isaac McMullen. Right at the first down marker, it'll be enough for a first down. That's a big play right there. The Knights needed that first down, if nothing more, just to continue possessing the ball, run another three plays worth of time off the clock. But McMullen, he got up in the air on that one. He absolutely did. And folks, I don't know, for those in the, in watching in the audience, Maybe you haven't worn pads before, but reaching up like that for a pass with pads on your shoulders, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So like you said, he had to get up there. They're going to hand it off. And once again, no gainer. Randolph Macon's done a great job defensively at shutting down the run for Southern Virginia. The Knights have really had to rely on their passing attack. No, they're doing a good job right there, shutting down the middle of the field. You know, the Knights in order to be successful for the most part, have had to try and stretch the field. Yes. You know, horizontally just to gain a couple yards. The lone exception, of course, being that run by Lockley into the end zone, or, or Hackey. Under three and a half minutes now in the first half. McMullen in motion. 
They're going to hand it off, actually do the option. Hackey brought down in the backfield. Way to cover the pitch man. That time, I believe it was number 33 for Randolph Macon. That is Dylan Watson, junior linebacker. So now third down and 10. Same situation that the Knights were in just a few moments ago. Ball at the 40 yard line, or 41. And like you mentioned, Colby, the wind has picked up a little bit, so deep balls are gonna be harder to come by. Aki back to pass. He's got some pressure right away up the middle. Able to evade it. Throws across the field, complete at midfield. To number six, Jake Shank. So once again, they're a third and 10 situation. They get a first down pass. Hackey's really done a good job on these last two possessions, moving this offense, making good decisions. So good for him, you know, settling those nerves down that were, I think, fairly apparent there in the first quarter and really helping this night offense move. And as you can see in that instant replay, really throwing across his body for that first down pass. And that's a difficult thing to do, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what. Hackey has 71 passing yards after that play. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That was Walter Collins. So now second down and 11. Again, this drive so far, it's been first and second down. Have really been tough going for the Knights. Haven't really been able to get much of anything. He's going to take it. He's going to slide. Flying in there for that tackle was number three. That is Kay Jones. Hackey once again with another carry, making it third down and eight yards. Now just over a minute to go in this first half. The Knights doing a great job just winding down the clock, trying to get it to halftime. Throw it to the outside is Hackey. And brought down after a gain of about three is Isaac McMullen once again, now under a minute. A little surprised not to see a timeout here by Randolph Macon to force the Knights to get rid of that ball. I think they realize that Southern Virginia has no timeouts remaining. So I think they're more than content to try to just let the clock wind down. See if they can just stop Southern Virginia. Interesting. Uh, it is this fourth down and four. So the Knights are going to punt it away, making it a last second choice, trying to catch Randolph Macon, change the personnel. Rugby style punt once again. This is a solid punt. Fair catch that time by number 11. That is JoJo Marinella. Just 10 seconds remaining. So I, I, I like what Southern Virginia did there. They attempted the idea of the fourth down attempt, and they rushed their punt team on there, trying to use them as much time as they possibly could. So now, if you're Southern Virginia, there's 10 seconds left. You put all the defensive backs back. No one behind you, nothing silly before halftime. You've played a solid second quarter, where you're leading for most of you. You ended up losing the quarter 10 to seven as of right now. They just want to go in. Nine to seven. 97, you're correct, because of Miss PAT. We'll give him credit for every little point in there. <laughs> Absolutely correct. But well, again, nobody behind you. Defensive backs don't even, even think about coming close to the line of scrimmage. That yeah, Randolph Macon's lining up at least like they're going to make some sort of a play here. You would have thought that since they didn't call timeout, maybe they'd just hand the ball off. But nope, they're going to throw it. Evan only throws it to the left side. That's to Hale. He's going to run out of bounds with about three seconds to go. That was enough for a first down. I'd also be surprised they took a deep shot here, I think, at this point with three seconds left. Now you just kind of either throw a quick pass to the outside, tr try to treat it like business as usual, you know? Well, it looks like they just put in a couple extra receivers here, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. Nope, victory formation or run out first half formation. And indeed, they will kneel it down. 
to end the first half, where the score now stands 23 to seven in favor of the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon College. Again, we mentioned that Southern Virginia did a good job fighting back in that second quarter. But one thing we talked about before this game started was third quarter for Southern Virginia. That's been a problem against highly competitive teams like Randolph-Macon in the past. Do you come out, how much energy do you have coming out of the locker room? You can't come out flat-footed or else Randolph-Macon or teams like Randolph-Macon are going to make you pay for it. No, absolutely, and we talked about the defense was not on the field for a long period of time in the second right. quarter. So they're going to come out halftime. Randolph-Macon will receive the kickoff. That's true. And so right off the bat, that defense is going to be tested. You know, and if they can put up a good stand, you know, maybe SVU can get that ball back and continue the momentum that they gained in that second quarter offensively. Absolutely, and that's a lot of that comes with what you say at halftime if you're the coaches. Again, you, you bring up what we just said. Hey, second quarter, if that were a game in itself, we're very close. We're very, very close. We can have a third quarter like that. We can have a fourth quarter like that. Again, minimize the mistakes that put us in the deep hole we're in in the first quarter. Then, hey, who knows? Things can go well for us in the second half. And we'll enjoy some halftime festivities here, courtesy of Southern Virginia's marching band, as well as dance and cheer squads. We will be right back for a second half action between the Yellow Jackets and the Knights. Stay tuned.
Can you hear them down there? Can you hear them down there? Um, can you tell them? We'll probably want to go live with around maybe three or two minutes left on that clock. Thanks.
It's a field goal is made at the end. They will win a free oil change from Grace Automotive. Good luck, Courtney. Good luck, Todd. Let's cheer them on.
back for the start of the second half between Randolph Macon and your Southern Virginia University Knights in the first half. The Yellow Jackets came away with a 23 to seven lead, even though Southern Virginia had, you know, Colby, you know we're talking during the break, probably had their best quarter of football so far this season, able to score a touchdown, really shorten the gap. Of course, Randolph Macon right away had a major passing touchdown down the middle of the field. But you know, one thing we talked about during the break, Southern Virginia, again, they, they Shorten the gap in that second quarter, but how do you respond in the third? The third quarter has been an issue for Southern Virginia over the past couple of years, especially against programs like Randolph-Macon where the Knights are looking to make some noise, trying to pull off an upset. The other team tends to come out and really put on a show in the third quarter. I mean, what are some things that Southern Virginia can do to limit that? How can they come out here and not be flat-footed? You know, they have to be excited coming off of that second quarter. Right. You know, like we've talked about, you know, they were able to keep Randolph Macon's offense off of the field for all but about three minutes of yeah. that second quarter. Um, so the defense should be well rested coming out. You know, you had halftime, but they've been off the field. You have the opportunity at halftime to make some defensive adjustments. Um, you know, you, you got to find a way coming off that best quarter of your season to follow it up with with another, yeah. maybe a better quarter or at least equal to and see what happens. You just got to find a way to keep yourself in the game. And one of those ways that they can keep themselves in the game is to drastically improve their rushing attack in the second half. You know, you know, we're talking. They had 22 rushing attempts in the first half. A couple that had solid gains, but overall gain in the first half was zero yards rushing. It was Randolph making defensive line full of seniors and a bunch of leaders that have been here with this team for a while. They've really taken control of that line of scrimmage. And, you know, you know, we're talking, you, you pointed out, Southern Virginia's offensive line, it's a lot of younger players. A lot of players getting, some of them, the first taste of college football ever. And so going against an experienced defensive line like that, you got to find some creative ways to help each other out. If you're struggling with a certain defensive lineman, you know, back when I was playing offensive line back in high school, if we had a day where one of us was struggling against somebody, we had to find something creative to do. It was like, okay, I need your help to maybe give this guy a little shove on the shoulder, give me a little bit of a push give me a little something to help me clear a path for running backs. Because again, if you're just going to rely on the passing game the entire second half, I mean, you can make a couple of plays, but you got to have both sides of an offense to make it work. And as an offensive line, you just, I, I believe you have to take a little personal, yes. make yourself a personal challenge that, you know, I'm not going to be beaten. You know, right. I'm not going to be beaten off the block. You know the snap count. The defense doesn't know the snap count. Obviously, you don't want to make mistakes and be jumping, you know, false starts. But at the same time, you've got to find a way to give yourself that little edge. If this offensive line can find a way to make a one-yard push, that's going to help make that, off, that running game flow a little bit easier than what it is right now. Absolutely. And Hackey had a pretty solid second quarter, ended with a total 85 passing yards in that first half. But Randolph making deferred to the second half, so they'll receive the second half kickoff. That kick will land in the end zone, and so the Yellow Jackets will start off this second half on their own 25-yard line. And then Drew Campanelli, he didn't have to do much in the first couple possessions as he handed the ball off to Hale, as well as uh, Williams being able to hand it off to his running backs and let them take control. Uh, excuse me, Hale and Johnson and Clark. But then the second quarter, he really came alive. He started really throwing it down the field. He had a bomb of a throw. We mentioned that one play drive to number seven, David Wallace. And so, again, able to really come alive in that second quarter. And so Southern Virginia really needs to account for that as well. As we talked about, the wind has picked up. It feels a little bit even more than it was just before halftime. So I'd expect to see, you know, a little bit uh, Hale and Clark here to start off the second half for Randolph-Macon. 
Fake the handoff, Campanelli throwing down the field, wide open to Wallace once again, able to evade defenders. Coming up from behind to track him down is number 26, Colby Knight. So Randolph-Macon, again, they recognize that Southern Virginia in the second quarter, they, they played them really tough, so they wanted to come out and deliver a message right off the bat, really set the tone for the second half to make sure they can try to find a way to pull away and not repeat what happened in that second quarter. And it's been impressive how right on the money Campanelli has been on all of those long throws. Just perfectly in stride with all those receivers, allowing them to make plays down the field. I gotta mention that long touchdown to Wallace, really hitting him in stride so he can run the rest of the way. So now they're setting up shot first and 10 on Southern Virginia's 27 yard line after the massive pass play. And I mentioned the wind, but it didn't seem to affect Campanelli at all right there on that pass, just right spot on yeah, to Wallace there down the middle of the field. Now they're in a power eye formation. They're gonna hand it off to Hale. Only gonna pick up about four. I say only, even though it's pretty much what you want as an offensive coordinator, pick up four yards of pop. Makes it second down and six. You know, the Knights have done a pretty good job all game and not letting them run wild. You know, they've kept the runs to, to manageable yardages. Right. You know, like you say, four or five yards, you know, the offense will take that all day, but it hasn't been 10 here, 12 there. Another handoff to the left side. Breaking through the pack is number 20, Mitchell Johnson. Steamrolling his way for a first down inside the 15. Looked like he was going to be stopped by a group of Knight defenders. Was able to make his way through there quite easily. It's now first down and 10 at the 13 yard line. They're going to hand off. Nearly brought down in the backfield. Still on his feet inside the five. Eventually brought down by Colby Knight. We got a Knight down around the 12-yard line. We weren't really able to see what happened there. Still trying to make out who it is. He is standing up now. Still waiting to see, I believe it is number 91, Sean Brown, freshman defensive lineman from Harriman, Utah. Was very slow to get up. <laughs> Holding his left arm as he's making his way off the field, not really sure, don't want to assume the injury here. But he's able to make his way off the field under his own power, which is always good to see. Hopefully nothing serious as it's now second down and one inside the five. Brown was in the backfield and nearly made a tackle for a loss. They're going to hand it off up the middle. Just blowing past defenders for a touchdown. That is Mitchell Johnson once again. Had a beautiful little open valley for him to run through. Maybe touched by one or two defenders, but he'll make his way into the end zone for a touchdown, make it 29 to seven PAT pending. Again, that making offensive line was able to open up a, a hole there that Mitchell was able to hit. Here's Ely for the point after. That one is good. His previous point after was blocked after that long touchdown pass after Southern Virginia's touchdown drive, which is why the score now stands 30 to seven instead of what would have been 31 to seven. The refs are discussing something in the red zone. Don't see any flags down, probably just. Not really sure exactly what that was all about, but regardless, Knights will get the ball back 
with just under 13 minutes to go in this third quarter. They find themselves down by 23 points. And now, again, they have a chance to respond. They didn't start off the first quarter very well offensively, making a couple of mistakes and miscues. Let's see if they've been able to polish that off. And, you know, Colby, you and I were talking before we went live for the second half that there just seemed like some plays where it, there was a sense of uncomfortability. It seemed like there was some awkwardness and, and handoffs and, and pitches and snaps. It just seemed like things weren't quite gelling together like they'd want them to. Well, and that's one of those things where you work on that during practice a lot. Right. You know, absolutely, they work on the handing of the ball and all of that in practice, but there's just something a little bit different when you get onto the field. Solid tackle there by a combination of number 22, Gage Pennington, and number 44, Jackson Curry. Meeting Langtree at the ball. This will be first down and 10 at the Knights' own 17-yard line. Now Lachlan Hackey has a chance to come out here and guide his team, possibly on a scoring drive, try to bring it back within a more reasonable margin. And off to the left side, penalty flag. I believe it's going to be a holding there on number nine, Matt Johansson, including a loss of yardage on the run. They've tried that sweep run a couple of times along either side, and the first time was successful, but every time since then, it's been a loss of yardage, and so Randolph making clearly knowing how to defend that after the first time around. Yeah, unfortunately for the Knights, the, the defensive line for Macon has just been able to push through that offensive line and really get to that running back before they can hit the edge. Right. Randolph Macon declined the penalty because, it, like I mentioned before, it was a loss of yardage anyway. Make it second down and 15. Back to pass is Hackey. Trying to set up downfield pass. He's going to launch it. Nearly brought down by number 21, Isaac McMullen. Covered tightly by number 12, Alex Biddle. Alex Biddle, I've said his name several times today for Randolph Macon. He's been all over the field for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, he's been clogging the holes there, the running lanes, you know, up near the line of scrimmage. And then you see right there, gets out on coverage well down the field. That incomplete pass makes it third down and 15. I love the mentality from Hackey. He saw the one-on-one, -on -one, then later on, one-on-two matchup and had a solid ball, tad underthrown, which has kind of been the case so far today, but still gave his receiver a chance to go up for the catch. Hackey back to pass again. Pocket collapsing, throws it down the field. And that's complete. It's number 18, Dylan Dwyer, able to hold on to the ball for the first down even though he had three defenders trying to pull at the ball. Another third down completion there by Hackey. I was Hackey. about to say that. We were talking during the break that last week they completed two out of 14 third, or converted two out of 13, 14 first downs, or third downs, excuse me. I they, think that's three in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna gain about a yard or two on that carry. Three I mean, out of four. There was a one possession just before halftime. You're correct. The, uh, the Knights did end up punting on. But, I mean, if you're going to take anything away from this game so far, you're seeing a progress in being able to convert on third down, even third down and long in most of those cases. Yes, it's been third and eight, third and nine. In that case, it's third and 16. So now second down and about eight to go. The option, Hackey's going to keep it. He's going to be brought down after maybe a gain of half a yard, if that. Looks going to say he was tackled at the line of scrimmage. Again, it looked like there's a little bit of room there for him to hit a hole there, but then just the second that happens, you know, Macon's right there to clog that. They've done a great job, at, like you just said, whenever there is a space opened up for runners. They've been able to fill it. Really, again, they just have a really good nose for the football. Going to 
and off up the middle on third down and eight. Gained about two yards. I think with that they have the mentality or the approach to go for it on fourth down because you're just trying to get a couple extra yards to make it easier conversion. Otherwise, I don't see why you run a running play like that when the running game has not necessarily been the most efficient for you. Yeah, they did pick up a couple yards. Also put them more in the middle of the field, which opens up, you know, a greater variety of plays. But now we see the punting team comes on. Wind at their back, so maybe they can pin them back inside their 10-yard line here. A high snap. Able to fake out the defender. It's a shorter punt, but it's still going to settle at Randolph-Macon's 34-yard line. Great reaction from the punter there to try to make sure that it wasn't blocked. Snap came in a little bit high. He was able to evade one defender. He, you know, we saw a replay, who knows? He might have been able to pull that down and run that off that left-hand side. That could have been quite possible. I mean, there was only eight yards to go. But regardless, able to get the ball away and make it to where Randolph Macon has to set up shop inside their own side of the field. Just under 10 minutes to go in this third quarter. And up the middle, good for about two yards. I believe that was Hale once again. That was actually Quasi Clark. Quasi Clark now has 30 yards rushing on the day. He is second for Randolph Macon behind Nick Hale, who has 48. So again, like you said, no crazy yards gained on any carry for Randolph Macon, but it's been very consistent. Four or five yards, that time only about two yards. A solid pickup here on the ground. That is Clark once again. And that kind of shows you the patience of this offensive unit, just knowing, hey, we don't need to hit home runs, just get a couple of five-yard bursts at a time, set up a good, lengthy drive, wear out the defense. Just, just, keep, just keep moving forward. Yeah, a very mature it, approach to that. Wear out the defense, take the yards that come to you. And plus the luxury when you can actually pull it off. It's one thing to think you can do it. It's another thing to pull it off like they have been. Clark able to make some defenders miss. Finally pushed out of bounds around midfield, maybe snuck into night territory. I think they're going to call him out right at midfield. Again, Colby Knight coming up from his position, almost was able to get to him in the backfield. Colby Knight's another one of those defenders that's just been all over the place today, making tackle after tackle. That's the sixth tackle for Colby Knight today. He is now tied with Stockton Ferguson and Bobby Balboa. It's a fullback run here. That was number 45, Cam Mahoney. Freshman tailback. He was lining up a fullback that time. And I, I'm a big fan of the oldies, so I love seeing a fullback get his due. Yeah, they may not get a lot of carries, but it seems like every time when they just do that quick hitter, first guy through, you know, that time it was three yards, but it's not, it's not, uh, it happens quite a bit where they might run off 15, 20 yards yeah. on that quick hitter, bust through that line before anybody reacts. We're gonna hand it off to Clark once again. He's gonna bounce to the outside, plenty of room. He's gonna spun down to the ground by number 34, Andre Lucas. You know, talking about fullbacks, always makes you think about the last great fullback that was popular was Mike Allstott, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know? I mean, that guy set the standard for a lot of fullbacks everywhere. And again, I just, I just love seeing that. Tom Rathman, 49ers. Yep. yep. Another Moose really Johnson, one. Cowboys. Fullback's an underrated position, I gotta say. I wish I, we'd see fullbacks be used more often. Good pass completion there for Campanelli. And a pushed out of bounds after about an eight yard gain. Andre Lucas, down. 
So second down and two to go inside night territory. And a couple of substitutions for Southern Virginia's defensive line trying to keep them fresh. We're seeing Macon here now with a very methodical drive here. Using a lot of that clock like we mentioned Southern Virginia did in the second quarter. Giving the Knights a little taste of their own medicine. Campanelli complete to the left side and once again Colby Knight right there to bring him down. Actually, that's not, that's not Knight. That is number 28, Momoa Matalolo. Here's Johnny on the spot. Regardless, that's still enough for a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Now at around six minutes left in the second quarter. Hand off to the right side. Brought down from behind is number 20, Mitchell Johnson. We haven't said his name very often in the second half so far. But again, that was Matalolo coming around to chase him down from the back side. Yeah. Good pursuit there on the defense. So now second down and six. One receiver in this formation for Randolph Macon. And surprise, surprise, they're going to hand it off. It's a very run heavy formation they had there. As once again, Mitchell Johnson. I believe Seth Dahl was in on the tackle in that time. So now the Knights force a third and five here. Maybe put an end to this drive here for the Yellow Jackets. Of course, Ely has definitely shown that he has the leg to make a field goal from this range. So if the Yellow Jackets aren't able to convert, they're thinking, okay, we got a solid kicker, put some extra points on the board, extend the lead by three. Campanelli back to pass. Throws to the outside, able to make a defender miss. Brought down at around the 10. And number 26, Holden Hodge is hoping for a face mask. He may have an argument there. Maybe the defender got inside of his uh, shoulder pad collar there. Either way, it looked like an uncomfortable tackle. Yeah, he was definitely asking for it. But now first down and goal right at the 10 yard line. A lot of fans of Randolph making not happy with the no call there, which again, I can completely understand. From up here, you can definitely see some grabbing around the head area. Not quite sure if it was exactly the face mask, but here is, that is Hale breaking tackles left and right, purging his way into the end zone for a touchdown. I think he made about five defenders miss that time. Yeah, he was able to navigate his way through the traffic there and make it into the end zone. Looked like several night defenders had an opportunity but we're unable to bring him to the ground. And Hale gets his first touchdown of the game. That brings his total count in the season to seven touchdowns. And that makes the score 37 to seven. So 14 unanswered points for the Yellow Jackets in this third quarter. Again, we talked about before, third quarter being a huge problem for Southern Virginia, fi not finding a way to come out after halftime and really have that fire that they had going into halftime. And so now, again, you have to respond. You can't let the game get too far away from you. Try to end this third quarter on a positive note when you just have under four minutes to go in the quarter. And again, you mentioned time possession. Randolph Macon took most of that third quarter away just in that one drive alone. Yeah, they did. Like I said, that last drive was very methodical. They didn't go for the home run pass or anything like that. They were content to give it to their running backs, you know, a couple shorter passes. You know, I think actually the biggest gain was that second to last play here where there was that pass out in the flat where we had the right. questionable, you know, possible face mask that uh, was not called by the officials. And I was holding Hodge on that long gain. And here's Ely, ready to kick 
back to Southern Virginia. He has been kicking it towards the left side, towards Langtree pretty much all game long. And that pattern still holds. Fair catch in the end zone. So the Knights will start this possession at the 25 yard line once again. So again, if you're the Knights, I feel like as an offensive unit and as a viewer and as a fan, this is the drive where you need to have something happen. Right, regardless of what happens, whatever the final score ends up being, this is the possession where you make a statement. Whether it be you put up some points, you just kind of make a statement of, you know, we're not just going to lay down. We might be down by a little bit, but we're not just going to lay down and accept a defeat like this. We're going to make a statement. We're going to make you work for it. We're going to wear down your defense. So let's see if they do so. Hackey rolling out to his right, throwing across his body. They're going to say it was incomplete. He's targeting number 14, Jaron Dixon. You know, Dawson, I think the main thing that Coach Capay wants to see from these guys right now, his players, is that they continue to compete. Yes. You know, it's 37-7. to 7. You've got the number 12 ranked team here on your home field. You're a young team. Just compete. Yeah. You know, know your assignment. Work to complete your assignment and compete for the last quarter and, and three and a half minutes that we have. As number 33 runs to the right side, that's Walter Collins. One thing we're seeing number three, Stockton Ferguson, linebacker, an arm sling on the sideline here on the right side. Not sure exactly what is going on there. He's one of the leading tacklers for Southern Virginia today with a total of six tackles. We didn't see any moment where he was injured or was on the field. We'll try to see if we can find any more information regarding that. Here's Hackey back to pass. Pocket quickly collapsing and eventually brought down by number 54. That was Ryan Malik, the senior defensive tackle. That makes it fourth down and long, and the Knights will have to punt it away. Yeah, that pocket did not last long. No, there was a little bit of time there, but you know, a long third down like that takes a little bit of time for the routes to develop, and unfortunately, Hackey was un unable to get a pass off before the defense got to him. It's a solid punt here. It's gonna take a somewhat SVU bounce into Randolph-Macon territory. They're gonna down it at Randolph-Macon's 49-yard line, about as close to midfield as you can get without crossing it. Got two players down, one for the Yellow Jackets and one for the Knights. It looks like Randolph Macon's player is number six, Torn Carey Jarl. He's making his way off the field, limping a little bit, getting assistance. And then for Southern Virginia, it's number 14, Jaron Dixon also getting some assistance off the field. And they're both right in the same area, so possibly just a bad collision between the two players. Weren't really able to see exactly what caused them to be hurt, but regardless, Randolph-Macon will take possession at right at midfield. And a switch about quarterback for Randolph Macon, number three, uh, Brett Hutchin, or Hutchin, excuse me. He's back to pass for his first pass of the ball game. That is incomplete. He was targeting number 20, Mitchell Johnson. You know, we talked about this, Dawson, that even though Campanelli has been the starter, Hutchin, you know, he's had a very good year as well. He sees plenty of time. You know, in their previous two wins, that he all he has a completion percentage of 75% on the year. And a total of 199 yards and one touchdown to go with it. 
That is another completion that time to number 17, Colin Martin. And like you said, you know, when you have the first two games of the year for Randolph Macon where you score over 50 points and win by a margin of about at least 35 points each time, you get the chance to put in players like your second string quarterback in Hutchin to try to get some time, get some reps, to kind of just build toward the future of your program as we're approaching under two minutes to go in this third quarter. Here's Hutchin, another completion across the middle. He's still free. That is number 17, Colin Martin once again gets inside the 20. Balboa on that tackle. And again, we talk about being able to get playing time. You can see that the transition between quarterbacks was seamless. Able to go in there, still execute the offense, make a couple of big plays downfield. They're very comfortable in this situation. Very much so. You see three passes in a row, and that's the thing. They've been able to put the, take the games in hand early enough that Hutchin can come in and get some passes off without just being the backup where you see usually just handing the ball off to kill the, t kill the clock. Speaking of handing the ball off, that one was to Johnson for a gain of about five on that carry. Now inside the night 15 yard line. The Yellow Jackets will have to run one more play before the end of the third quarter. Still have Johnson in the backfield in the I formation. Another fullback blast here to number 45, uh, Cam Mahoney. Maybe the most have heard us gushing about fullbacks earlier in their previous drive. But you know what, let's do it again. Get some close to first down, make it third down and about two feet maybe. And that will bring us to the end of this third quarter. The Yellow Jackets came out swinging, scoring 14 unanswered points, making it a 37 to seven score going into the fourth and final quarter. I'd say that although this game hasn't quite gone the way that SVU would have hoped, it's just been an absolutely beautiful day for football out here at the fields of Southern Virginia. I mean, it's not a cloud in the sky has been here. I mean, there's a couple of clouds, but you know what I mean. And you know, Colby, you know, we're talking earlier, there's a group over the left side of the stadium they're doing college football right. Brought a bunch of lawn chairs, tents. They even have a inflatable sort of corner couch situation that makes me incredibly jealous as a viewer of college football that I've never thought of that before. Yeah, we'll have to see if maybe next time they can bring it up here <laughs> or we can try it out. Make it like college game day up here with a couple of couches. I'd, I'd be fine with that. If they want to go big time, they got to bring us some of the food they're cooking over there, right? <laughs> some of the barbecue, some good chicken. Again, it's been a fantastic day for college football out here. You couldn't really ask for anything better. And we've seen some great action from both sides going into this fourth quarter. We'll see if we can have an exciting final quarter. And Southern Virginia's defense needs to hold up here on this drive of Randolph Macon, who is now knocking on the door with a third down and one to go inside the 15. Real quick, we want to give another shout out to our athletic partners of Southern Virginia Athletics. A lot of local businesses being Cornerstone Bank, Mill Creek Orthodontics, River Crossing Apartments, Straws, Drinks and Eats, Grace Automotive, Papa John's Pizza, Vinyl Cuts, The Beef, Sweet Souvenirs, and Katana Sushi and Hibachi Express. Thank you so much for partnering with Southern Virginia Athletics. If you want to partner with Southern Virginia Athletics, please contact Brett Schroeder at 801-633-1894. Thank you so much for your support of Knights Athletics. So we still have Hutchin in there at quarterback. Just waiting for the go ahead from the refs here. Another fullback dive. Once again from Mahoney. And speaking of the rest, I want to give a shout out to the referee crew here today. They've done a solid job. Head referee John Hoover, umpire Scott Wolk, 
head linesman Billy Thomas, line judge Marvin Greenwell II, side judge Jeremy Mayhew, field judge Jeff Nance, and back judge Chris Burnett. It's been a consistently called game all day long. Can't really ask for much better from your referee crew. Well, they've done a good job, and we should point out, you know, just there's the six of them. Yeah. I believe the D1, Division One football, has 11 referees. Here's Hutchin running it himself, brought down at about the eight-yard line. He kind of gave himself up around that area of the field. But like you said, running a crew with actually seven on this list, it's not an easy thing to do. So now second down and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Be a huge win for Southern Virginia if they're able to hold out and force a field goal in this situation. Like we were talking coming into the half, just continue to compete. Right. You know, that's all you can ask for at this point. You know, take pride in what you're doing out there as we finish this game. Watch him looking to his right. What a phenomenal catch over the shoulder by number 17, Colin Martin who since Hutchins coming to the game, that's been his favorite target, leaps over his defender, reaches around him, and grabs that ball. I mean, in that situation, there's not much more that you can do if you're number 28, Momoa Matalolo. There's really not much you can do. No, he was covering him well. You know, he did not contact him before the ball was there, so he wasn't going to get a pass interference. It was just a great play there to come up and over the top of him. The PAT is up and into the woods. Make the score 44 to seven in favor of the Yellow Jackets. I'm curious to see in this situation if we'll see the same offensive group we have seen all game long or if the Knights are gonna basically do the same thing and try to bring in some younger players, try to get them some minutes. Yeah, you never know. It'll be interesting to see what Coach DePay chooses to, to do here for these final 13 and a half minutes. Um, it's a young team as it is. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me to see Hackey takes, take a few more snaps or if he decides to, to let one of the other quarterbacks come in and see what they can do for the last 13 and a half minutes. And here's Ely lining up to kick once again. Here's the kick. Langtree will call a fair catch once again. And the Knights will set up at the 25. Yet to see which quarterback they're going to go with here for this possession. Knights still in the huddle here. With 20 seconds left in the play clock, they're taking a good amount of time. And we will still see Lachlan Hackey under center. Which I think I like this decision, personally. I think you just want to get more, more reps. You mentioned, Colby, that it's still a younger team. You want to make sure that you get as much of the flow of the offense as you possibly can, especially with the miscues you had early on. Hackey pulls it. Gets a solid hit on him. That was from number 15, Drake Schaefer, another senior on this defense. Yeah, Schaefer settled in there. He had his eyes on Hackey, and Hackey bounced right off of him. You know, or to your earlier point about this defense, Colby, that it feels like every player on the defense for Randolph Macon that has made a play today has been a senior. This defense is absolutely stacked with upperclassmen and experienced players. It's been incredibly impressive to see. Second down and 11 for the Knights. Hackey back to pass. He's going to chuck it deep down the sideline. Nearly caught by number 21, Isaac McMullen. It was a well-thrown ball down the sideline. But McMullen was met right away by a defender. And he lost track of the ball. 
McMullen's done a good job today of getting himself open. He really has. Yeah, he's running some good routes. You know, he's been the target of several passes, you know, brought several in. You know, had a couple others that he tried to make. You know, they would have been miraculous catches had he brought them in. But uh, he's, he's really had a good day out there. So now that leaves it at third and 11. Play clock is winding down six seconds. Knights taking their time. They're going to hand off up the middle. This is the longest run they've had so far today. That's going to be enough for a first down and a little bit more. That's Kevin Williams. I think a big part of that was the fact that Randolph Macon was not expecting a run call whatsoever because we've seen in the past, at least in this game, where Hackey has completed a first down or converted a third down where it's like third and ten or third and nine, so they figured it would be more of the same. Nevertheless, that's another third down conversion for the Knights. And then a penalty flag right away. Still waiting to see who the guilty party is. It's a neutral zone infraction. That is number 46, Jake Risk. Another senior defensive tackle. Makes a first down and five for Southern Virginia. Sets the Knights up nicely. Going to hand it off once again. That is Keevan Williams. He's going to gain maybe a yard on that one as he bounced it outside. So now under 12 minutes to go in this one. Second down and four for Southern Virginia. Hack fakes the handoff. Throws too far over the head of his wide receiver, Matt Johansson. I mean, that was kind of well covered on that flat on the near side of the field, but still had an opening to complete that pass, just overshot it. Yeah, he's been able to thread a couple passes into tighter spots than that. Yeah. You know, Johansson, I'm sure, would have liked to have a chance to, to get his hands on that ball just a little bit too high of a release. That makes a third down and four, close to midfield. Hack is gonna take it himself. He's gonna dive forward for a first down. And Hackey's had some decent success on the ground today. First down and 10, again with the hard count, trying to get the Yellow Jackets to jump. Again, Randolph making showing that discipline, not falling for it. Another handoff, that's Williams brought down right about the line of scrimmage. I believe in on that tackle was number 43, Brandon Watson. That appeared to be another one of those times that we talked about where it just took a little bit longer mm -hmm. to develop from the snap to the handoff. Just wasn't as crisp as it could have been, and that allowed the time for the Macon defender to come in and grab Williams. Take the handoff, Hackey back to pass, looking down the field. He's got a wide open receiver. And that's complete for a first down. On the receiving end of that is number 81. Uh, Kike Barber, or Baker, excuse me. Baker's made a couple plays so far today. Kike Barber able to get another first down reception. We got the 20 yard line. 
It's not like there was a whistle blown, so some hesitation here. Aki nearly completes another pass, that time intended for number 17, Scott Dupe. It'll be second down and 10. Dupe, a sophomore wide receiver from Pleasant Grove, Utah. I believe it's the first time we've said his name today. That's a difficult catch when you're trying to run backwards, trying to correct your positioning your body, and also trying to be aware of the defenders near you. Here's the option. And recovered miraculously by Southern Virginia, I believe. That was number 21, Isaac McMillan. The pitch was just behind him. He had to reach out with the one hand. And there was a Macon defender right there. And McMullen was able to pull that ball into his chest before the making defender took that away. Fortunate play there for the Knights. Indeed, they still lost some yards because of the mishandled option. But again, maintaining possession is better than a turnover every single time. Absolutely. Now it gives Hackey another opportunity here on third down, third and long, third and 16. See if he can convert another one. And in this situation, you're kind of aiming for around the 15-yard line for a completion. Try to get to where it's a manageable fourth down conversion if need be. Aki's still rolling out, looking for receiver. Going to throw it over the top. Nearly a fantastic grab that time by number 18, Domo Dwyer. He went up for it, but it was knocked out of his hands, I believe, by defender number four. That is Silas James reaching up and knocking it free. It's now fourth down and 16. I believe the Knights are going to attempt a field goal here. The Knights have yet to successfully make a field goal so far this year. With Jerem Reed being 0 for 1. Here it is, got the leg. And it has the accuracy. There's three more on the board for Southern Virginia. And that was good from 36 yards. So now that'll make the score 44 to 10, still in favor of Randolph Macon, but the Knights able to get something out of that possession. And it's also nice to know because in years past, there have been times where Southern Virginia wouldn't have had the confidence in their ability to make a field goal like that. So now it just kind of shows you in games in the future where it's a closer contest and you need something, you need anything, you know, you have a kicker who can make a field goal from at least 36. At the end of the day, it was one more play they were able to execute. Yeah. You know, the snap, the hold, and a, a good, strong kick from, from 36 yards. You know, it would have been good from, like we've been saying, another 10, yeah. most likely. Had plenty of leg underneath it. And so now just over nine minutes to go in this contest. The Knights down by 34, and Randolph Macon has a chance to add more to their lead. But we'll see if Southern Virginia's defense can step up to the challenge and shut them out for the rest of the game. A fair catch automatically called. Randolph Macon's number 82, Chase Flora, the sophomore wide receiver. I'm sure the coaching staff here, you know, defensive coordinator probably imploring with his defense to make a stop here. Yes. Just get a stop, let the offense go back in. You know, if they get a stop here, then let the offense go back in, have another drive, yeah. put up another three points or seven points even with a touchdown. I think Coach Depay would be very happy with the effort here. You know, outside perhaps the first quarter. Right, absolutely. And also you have to consider the fact that Randolph Macon has not scored less than 51 points in a game so far in this young season. So you got to imagine there's a little bit of pride in there trying to think if we can hold them under 50. And obviously you don't want to give up even close to that. It's not like that's moral victories aren't necessarily victories. But that's one thing you can take away being like, hey, we're proud we're able to do that because no one else yet has been able to do so. Right. Good completed pass there on first down to the return man, 82, Chase Flora. Now you're always always looking to challenge your team, your players, see which ones are willing to accept the challenge, even late in the fourth quarter when, you know, it's 44 to 10, you want to find out who your gamers are, yeah. who's going to accept the challenge no matter what the score is. Now second down and three. Hutchin in the backfield. 
He's going to throw it to the flat. That's completed for a first down to number 24, Cameron Chapman. The sophomore running back who escaped out of the backfield was completely uncovered. So first down and 10 at their own 39 yard line. Eight minutes left in this contest. Here's the handoff up the middle. Good gain of about three yards. That was number 24, Cameron Chapman, once again on that play. And of course, assuming if Randolph Megan's able to come over with a victory here, which judged by the score is very much most likely, that would make them 3-0 all-time against Southern Virginia in their matchup history. So second down and seven. Another handoff, going to bounce to the outside. A penalty flag on the field as he's forced out of bounds. That's Christian uh, Cosino. That was holding on Tyler Gonbolt. So the successful run will be moving backwards. That'll give this night defense a good opportunity here to kind of dig in and see if they can come up with a couple stops here in the next couple downs and get the ball back for the offense. bit extra night athletics news in about 30 minutes Southern Virginia's women's volleyball team will have their second contest of the day here on night's broadcasting so shortly after this football contest we'll see Southern Virginia's volleyball program once again as that pass is completed close to a first down he may have gotten out a bounds just past the first down marker and like I mentioned before Southern Virginia will face off against Meredith College just down the road at Nine Arena. So first down and 10 for Randolph Macon after that completed pass. Receiver stopped just short of the yard mark, but then was able to escape the tackle and then went out of bounds about a yard after the yard marker. once again to Cosino. A good gain of about five. And I think at this point, if you're Randolph Macon, you're just content with trying to run down the clock, you know, get out of here with the victory. Again, you're still running some good solid plays, getting some good minutes for your, your second string, and maybe trying to put some extra points on the board, get them a little bit more of that momentum for themselves. But again, just more than content with just running down the clock, getting it to your running backs who have been providing for you all game long. Absolutely. You just want to continue to show your dominance, show future opponents that, you know, you can go two, three, maybe even four players deep if you need to. Solid run once again by Mitchell Johnson in that time. Had a couple of solid blocks in front of him. Bobby Balboa. Was there for the tackle. That was actually number 30. Uh, Cusino once again on that carry. You mentioned women's volleyball, Dawson. Also, later on tonight here at Night Field, the men's soccer team will be taking on Marymount College. Absolutely. The men's soccer team has a nice little two match winning streak going right now. Well, that'll be at 5 45 p.m. Eastern Time once again here on Night Broadcasting. So a lot of great Southern Virginia athletic action here today because, again, we had women's volleyball earlier today. And they played against Pfeiffer. Men's and women's cross-country teams were also in action earlier today over at Longwood University. 
about an hour and a half away from campus. Now second down and nine for the Yellow Jackets. Hutchin in the backfield all by himself. Complete to the right side, missed tackle there. Able to move forward for a couple of yards is Joe Locke. And I mentioned that earlier contest for women's volleyball. They won that contest with a score of three sets to two. There is a yellow jacket down on the field. He's down at around the 40 yard line. Do not currently know who it is as of yet. We'll let you know as soon as we know. Looks like an offensive lineman for the Yellow Jackets. Which again, Colby and I were talking about how fantastic of a job this Yellow Jacket offensive line has done all game long, whether it be in the running attack or giving, you know, uh, Campanelli or Hutchin plenty of time to throw the ball. They really commend the work they've done today. Yes, unfortunately for the Knights, I can't really think of a time where the defense was really able to rush right. or, or even get a hit on either of the two quarterbacks that have played for Macon today. And getting assisted off the field, it is number 64, Tyler Godbolt. And so the Yellow Jackets will have to substitute on that offensive line. With now third down and two, just under four minutes remaining in this contest. off to Cusino, brought down in the backfield. You know, we talked about getting a rush. The Knights able to get one that time. And the former number 16, Colby Heider. That makes it fourth down and five. And we'll see the Yellow Jacket offense stay on the field. I mean, at this point, you're up 44 to 10. You don't have much to lose. Again, what's an extra rep? Watch him back to pass, looks to his left. Incomplete across the middle of the field. So, turnover on down for the Southern Virginia defense late in this one. And now you're off to the chance with three minutes left to put together one last drive and bring this contest a little closer in the final score. We we'll see a good stand there by the night defense. Those last two downs, you know, finally, like we just said, got some pressure up the middle to drop the running back for a loss. And then Hutchin wasn't able to connect there on that fourth and five. Giving the night offense one more opportunity to come out and try and put some more points up on the board. Aki's gonna hand it off up the middle. That is to number 24, Titan Morris. Be a good solid gain of about four on that play. Make it second down and six. That's one of the better running plays of the game besides that long 20 yarder in the third quarter. Hacky back to pass. Got plenty of time, roll out to his right. Throws across by that is picked off. That is number 43, who was waiting right there. That was Brandon Watson. Hackey was looking for number nine, Matt Johansson. But Watson was right there. He was reading it all the way. Yeah, that's one of those, I think, with a little bit more experience, Hackey would have pulled that down. He had yeah. four or five yards that he could have gained right there, taking the ball out of bounds and come back and you know made positive yardage and, and reset the offense for one more play. But now Randolph Macon's offense will come back out onto the field with two and a half minutes remaining. And kind of like you said, a lot of those routes in the flats have been open for Southern Virginia today, so maybe just relying on what he'd seen in past plays and wasn't really looking for 
any defender that was there or was, wasn't there in previous plays before. Breaking through, my goodness. All the way to the end zone. That is number 24, Cameron Chapman. Just exploded through the line of scrimmage to the end zone for another touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. And so another game where the Yellow Jackets break 50 points pending the point after. And that's a tough one too because again the previous possession that Randolph Macon had, Southern Virginia put together such a great defensive stand, able to make them turn it over on downs. Here's Ely. Point after is up and good. Make it 51-10, to 10, the second time this season that Randolph Macon has, has scored exactly 51 points. First time was the first week against North Carolina Wesleyan. So once again, the Knights looking to respond. And I kind of want to see how Hackey responds after the interception as well. He's thrown one other interception earlier in the year. Him and Isaiah Maxey both came into this game with one interception apiece. But again, as a young quarterback, you know, seeing how mentally tough you are after making a mistake like that. You know, can you have short-term memory in that regard and just move on to the next play? No, it's always difficult as a young, you know, as a young quarterback, I'm sure he feels terrible about that play. You know, you never want to make a mistake, but right. you know, mistakes are going to happen. And so now you got to see, you know, what type of mental toughness he's going to have. What's he going to do when he comes back out here and gets that next step? Yeah, absolutely. It's so now two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. That's the second time where the Yellow Jackets have come out and one play touchdown. The first time was in the second quarter, long pass play to number seven, David Wallace. I believe a timeout being called by Randolph Macon. I think they may have made some substitutions on the kicking team and trying to make sure they have all the personnel that they need. We see a player running. In fact, we see two players running towards the huddle. That's another thing you tend to see when you have games like this where you're up by a wide margin and then you have you substitute other players and sometimes there's a bit of miscommunication or players that normally don't get playing time. They're called in and they don't necessarily hear their name. And I definitely have first-hand experience with that. It can be a little embarrassing. Or the player gets confused. They think they're supposed to be in one spot. But they're supposed to be, you know, especially here on special teams. Right. You know, it just shows, you know, the attention to detail that the coaches are putting into every play. Here they are up, you know, 41 points and on a kickoff. Somebody saw something they didn't like and right. said, nope, we're going to stop this right here. We're going to make make the correction rather than just letting it happen. It's, ah, nothing too bad is going to happen here. If you're trying to run a program of cultural, culturally embedded success, you want consistency, you want to make sure that you're treating every play like it's a potential game-winning play. Fair catch there by Langtree. So now the Knights will start once again on their own 25-yard line. And the score right now, 51-10 to 10 in favor of the Yellow Jackets of Randolph College. And indeed, we will see Hackey back on the field, which again, I, I personally like to see. Again, when we talked about when a quarterback, young quarterback makes a mistake like that, you want to put them right back out there, see how they respond, see how they lead the team, how they carry themselves. There's moments like this that build up a quarterback over time. Hackey throws across, that's Johansson. And that's what you down. want to see right there. Yes. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with the coach on that. I, I'm the same way. I hate pulling a kid after they make a big mistake. You know, a lot of times like that, he has to come off the field anyway. He turned the right. ball over. I want to put them back on the field and see what they're going to do. And they call a pass right out of the chute. And he was spot on to his target. And Johansson. Confusing everyone on the field. The ball ended up in the hands of number 17, Scott Dupay. I mean, I watch football all the time, obviously, for a living, but even I was confused on that one. I was trying to track where the football was, and Dupay ended up having it, and it ended up being a loss of yardage in the play, but that just 
Shows how Randolph Macon was able to follow it. It's now second down and 15. Just under a minute and 20 seconds remaining. Timeout called by Southern Virginia. Some more confusion as Hackey was trying to get Isaac McMullen to go in motion and he didn't see him waving him over until way late. And it's the same thing as we were talking about with Randolph Macon. You want to make sure you're running things smoothly. You want to make sure that you're not just trying to get to the end of the game and whatever sloppy play you can, just go with it. You want to make sure you're running things effectively, running things in the system. And again, just still competing, right? No, absolutely. That's that's the name of the game. Yeah. You know, that's why we play. You know, you want to compete. You know, all these players out here, they love to compete. They have the opportunity to play at the collegiate level. You know, now the coaches, that's just another reminder to their players. We're watching everything. Yeah. You know, even though we're down 41 points in the last minute, minute and a half, we're still watching that. We're going to do everything we can to help you succeed. I think it just shows the players that even with a deficit like this, coaches are still invested. Not only are they paying attention, they're invested. Right? They want to make sure that you have every chance you can to find success on the field, even in situations like this. And if for some reason the coaches feel that you're not as invested as, as they are or as you should be, they can point to that example right there and say, yep, we care so much, we called timeout down by 41. Hackey throwing it deep, picked off. And staying on his feet is number 18, Max Richardson, still on his feet, evading tacklers. Eventually brought down by number 14, Jaron Dixon. You know, Hackey just trying to make something out of very little, throwing it deep. And so now under a minute remaining, the Yellow Jackets will have it at midfield. You know, that's one of those where like, you don't really say bad job or good job too. It's one of those plays where like, you're trying to make something and you put it off your water receiver to make a play, just a tad overthrown. I mean, he was double covered, so it's an unlikely pass to be completed anyway. But now we see the Yellow Jackets in victory formation. Yeah, it's one of those where they wanted to they wanted to score on that last possession. Yeah, you know, so just you know, just over a minute left, you're 80 yards away. You know, you're going to have to pick up some chunk yardage there. Yeah. So they they called a play, where well, that was possible. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them this time. And so the Yellow Jackets kneel down. They'll have to kneel down one more time, and that'll bring this contest to a close. And that will do it. The final score will end up being Randolph-Megan College 51, Southern Virginia University 10. In a contest where, again, the second quarter of the Knights pulled in close. They nearly won the second quarter, if you're looking at it scoring-wise. They lost 9-7 to seven in that quarter. But then second half, Randolph-Megan just came out, really did a great job of executing, making, again, those chunk plays that they had some of in the first half, but not nearly as much. And then Southern Virginia just not having a lot of answers for them in that second half. No, we talked about it. There's a lot of firepower there yeah. on that Randolph Macon team. Yeah, you know, you're a top 12, you know, who knows? For all we know, by the end of the year, they might be a top five team. And, you know, there's a lot of firepower there in the night still. You know, they, they'd admit they still have a long ways to go. Yeah. But uh, probably their best showing overall um, of the season out here today. So they're. They're moving forward and progressing, and that's all you can ask at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, that second quarter today was one of the better quarters that Southern Virginia has played. And again, having a lot of younger players, having a new head coach for the first time in about four years, you know, there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be times where you're trying to adjust and you make small mistakes, if not sometimes bigger mistakes. And so it's one of those things where every week you got to be learning. you got to be learning what went wrong, what things we do well, what things we keep doing. And as a team, that's the only way you move forward and start to win games. You learn from every victory and loss. You got to win from everything, every every victory, every loss, every play, you know, yeah. every every quarter, every half. You know, and, and this is opportunity. You know, I'd imagine at some point in the next week, Coach Dupe is going to be with his team. Say, so, okay, that was a top 12 team in the country. Right. What did you see they do? You know, that you need to do as an individual. Right. You know, the, the player playing across from you. 
you know, what was he doing? What do you need to do? How can, you know, playing against that type of talent help you improve your game? Right, you're absolutely correct. What things do you take away from a team that, in randolph making, like you said, is going to go far this year? They have a great roster, great coaching staff, great culture. What can you learn from a team like that? And with that, once again, the final score of today's contest, 51-10 to 10 in favor of the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon College. On behalf of myself, Dawson Winter, my good friend here, Colby Camp, we thank you so much for tuning in to today's presentation of Southern Virginia Athletics. We thank all of our athletic sponsors. We thank all the fans who have tuned in, all the parents of these athletes. And thank you to all the staff who made this production possible. We hope you have a great day. God bless, and go Knights.